broken. Broken. Celebi is absolutely broken. What's good? It's your boy Rico. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Duel and welcome to part two of the Z-Powered update from my stream. Now, last video, I was talking about how I didn't understand how Gig said that Celebi was the best runner in the game, or specifically for grass decks, okay? When I think of the best figure, I think you actually have to physically use this figure, not just use its ability. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, Celebi's not that bad. Like, if it's status, it can't use its ability. So I'm like, all right, if I ever see a Celebi, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to status this figure, and then I'm going to leave it on the board because I soon learned that you can use its ability while it's on the bench or if it's in the PC. And I've had games that were absolutely bonkers where I've won, but the opponent had a Celebi in the PC and was able to use its ability. I'm like, okay, that's kind of broken. But what happens when the opponent does not use the Celebi at all? just has a Celebi sitting on the bench for the entirety of the duel. Well, we're about to find out. First, let's open up these boosters. Oh, don't mind this deck. I, I, just, <laughs> I actually played against this deck, and it was super annoying because you guys know Mega Absol's ability, where you can't use plates. They immediately went into Mega Absol and then brought on the Shaman form and have all dark figures with the Evolta, so you can't move through them. It was quite annoying, so I've been kind of messing around with it a little bit. Um, super gimmicky, but yeah, so disregard that. Um, I don't even know what we pulled. We pulled a bunch of nothing. So I want to let you guys know right now, tomorrow, we are going to be streaming Pokemon Duel tomorrow. We might stream tonight. I might stream Apex Legends tonight, but Pokemon Duel tomorrow, we are going to be getting the three hour booster, enhancer, whatever it is, and we're going to grind for three hours, and we're going to try to level up our figures because that's the easiest way to level up our figures is with through all those materials. So be on the lookout tomorrow. It'll probably be in the morning sometime. Probably 10 a.m. my time, which is in approximately like 12, 19 hours. That's probably, that doesn't even matter because this video is going to, whatever. I'm sorry. It's going to be 10, p 10 a.m. around 10 a.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time. Now let's jump into these matches. All right, this match. Shout out to Epixy. I think that's how you say it. Sorry. Please let me know in the comments if I said it incorrectly. But he sent me an email, and he sent me an email with all, like, four different duels. And, like I like I said, I know Celebi. I know what it can do. I know its ability. It's not a threat if this Pokemon is not affected by a special condition. I'm like, all right, that's all we're going to do is we're going to status it. But, like I said, what happens when you don't even play the figure? You just use its ability. I mean, we've all seen, well, I would say we've all, but many of us have seen or heard of the aliens with the, uh, the, the Celebi. I saw it first in a stream, I think it was G-Stream, and Divani was using it, but then they were crediting it to somebody else. I don't know who the original creator of this deck is, whether it was Divani or somebody else, but shame on you. No, I'm just kidding. Let's take a look at this deck and then just evaluate. Like, we know what the aliens can do. If the aliens get KO'd, they bring something back, all right? Let's just read its ability. When this Pokemon is knocked out, you may move one of your Pokemon that has been excluded from the duel to the bench. This Pokemon is excluded from the duel. So... Basically, what you do on this deck, you leave the Celebi on the bench. You just move around with your aliens. And if something happens that you don't like, guess what? You're just going to time travel. And that's it. So here we go. Excuse me for my cough here. So basically, all you can do is just set up all the aliens, like I said. And even when you do take back time or go back into time travel or even attack and you don't like it and you just go again, your Z gauge is going to build up. So here... Well, efficacy. I don't know. I think he's just trying to get the takeaway. He's trying to, you know, get an advantage on the board. Yeah, I'm like not sick, but I'm just developing the cop. Alakazam, who I do not have much knowledge of. Like I still have not even ran Alakazam, make Alakazam yet. I'm still rocking the Pikachu deck, and I've been messing around with uh, the Absol just a little bit. Although, epically, I think that this deck would be more annoying if you did have a Toppy Lele just to give you the extra star. So just wait. Oh, yeah. Is he already gone? He is gone. We missed it. We missed the first one. Neutral turns, neutral turns. 
He's going to DC here. I think he's going to go for the takeaway or the teleport. But he gets the teleport into the Psycho Shift. And now this is where <laughs> this is where it begins. The opponent's like, all right, we are going to remove you. Oh, hello, Celebi. Epic C's like, nah, you know what? I don't like what you just did there. Let me just uh, rewind it again. And the opponent's going to do it again. And Epic C's like, nope, mm -mm. let's go back. Let's go back and turn. And the opponent's like, I mean, you can get into those like annoying stalls, but that's not what's going to happen. Keep going back, and he built up his Z-Gage. Now he's going to Z-Move. Did you see that? He allowed him to do that and then rewound it because his Z-Gage was up. Going to KO this Alakazam and moves three spaces away. Like, just like that, gained a huge advantage. <coughs> the opponent's going to make a Lucario here. They're going to go after the LGM, attack him. But guess what happens? If he loses a roll, what do you think is going to happen? Here, let me let me attack this. Let me take this a fracture. Fracture is kind of annoying. Cause teleport. <clears throat> Clutch teleport here. That's actually a figure. We'll talk about the counters. That that that's one of them. You're gonna want one of those. Uh, but he's gonna go here. Like I said, he's gonna try and get a take. I don't think he's gotten a takeaway yet. Uh, gets KO'd here, and fracture gets the evolution. But guess what? Nope. I don't care. Oh, you're gonna evolve. Sorry, bro. Let's go ahead and uh, rewind time. I don't want you evolving. Oop, see you later. You guys kind of get my point. You see where this is going. <coughs> Guess a teleport. <laughs> gonna get the surround. Do you think we're gonna take the surround? Oh yeah. Epic C. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention. I watch this duel and it pauses right here. Like, look, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Play, stop. So I'm assuming right there, you were like, nope, mm -mm, I ain't gonna let you uh, surround me. So that's basically how broken Celebi is. Like, this is a representation of how the two parties are, the free to play and the pay to play. Because right now the pay to play can just completely bully you and be like, yo, guess what? This is an exclusive figure that we have access to that you do not get, and this is what we're gonna do to you. We're basically gonna bully you. This is basically pay free to play, this is pay to play, and this is how it feels. And I can understand how frustrating it is. Look, it's I can stop it, it doesn't stop. I can go, I don't think I can go back a turn, take back a turn, but I can end it. So I don't know why it doesn't finish, but I'm assuming you won this game where the opponent quit. So we're gonna end it there. And uh, like I said, this thing is broken. You guys kinda understand that. So let's try to, tier from there. Let's go into some matches that we played on my stream. This one is coming up against Mistrevis. I totally forgot to mention with that deck that we saw earlier with the aliens and the Celebi, if you are trying to counter it, make sure you have something that can send Pokemon directly to the PC. Lunala, Lunala Z move, and Combuskin. That'll offset that deck. Good luck. All right. JK, I lied. I don't have the dual ID from Mistrevious, so we're not going to be seeing this one, that one, but we are going to be seeing one against TNT. And look, when I saw this post from Epic Seed, because he put it in uh, Reddit, <coughs> talking about Celebi, I was like, Celebi ain't a problem. I played the Celebi and the Aliens. I, heard, I saw you talking about it. I'm like, I ain't, I'm not too worried about that. Like, they got the Latias, the Mega Latias, to make all the gold to me. Like, all my golds are gonna be white, even though I only have Coco that has a gold. Well, I guess Pika, too. Um, and they have the Altaria to bring figures back. And then the Celebi. Well, that's, I'm, this is, I get, well, this is before this person probably knew, TNT, knew about what's gonna happen. So, they're gonna bring on the Celebi, and like I said, we kinda knew what Celebi could do, so I was like, you can bring, you can come on the board. What I know that I have to do is we're going to have to status you. So, they're going to advance here with the Lottie. Dude, I still want a lot. Why did I not get Mega Lottie? I was like, why did I get the card taught? Uh, but anyway, Coco survives here, and now we're just going to be offensive here with the Poi Pole, which is going to force TNT to cover up. And then we're going to bring Pika on, and we're not even going to DC because I know I can out-damage this thing if I get my Volt Tackle, which we do. Let's go. Conf or paralyze myself. I do gain that plus MP, and... 
give myself plus 30 damage. <clears throat> so they're going to Eon Flute here. They're going to bring back that Latias, and there goes my gold, but my gold is not that big. Although, I did add um, an XP to this deck. I was going to DC here. He's going to try and take away my poor Pika. Why would you do such a thing, you monster? Okay, let's go. Get the KO. Plus, plus 40 damage. And the teleport. I'm like, whoo. That is clutch. I will take that 100%. We're going to take the extra point right here to prevent these other LGMs from coming on. And hopefully we just get a KO here. That would be nice. We'd be in a good position. What is the takeaway? And... I probably should have attacked the Latias because I would have. I don't th actually. I don't think I would have got damaged it, and I wouldn't have my gold. So, oh, uh, but anyway, we do see this thing, and I was like, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're definitely gonna attack you. We're gonna status you, and we're gonna leave you on the board so you can't pull any funny business, sir. So now we bring up the Coco. I realize that my Z gauge is almost full, and like I said before, Coco's kind of like my. Uh, my win condition and we get a clutch uh, blue here so now we can hit our twinkle tackle however what's bad is that the opponent TNT their Z gauge is up as well so as soon as we do get rid of this oh wait actually no this was this was this was actually okay I remember this play actually we twinkled here and my opponent can't really do anything why because this is a fl these are psychic and flying mont Psychic Mons, when they Z-move, they have to move three spaces away, right? Doesn't tell. You could... Wait, are you flying? No, Dragon Psychic. So Dragon is just a purple, right? Dragon's a purple. And it's not guaranteed to KO you because I don't hit above 120 and I don't hit above 120 here. And this is the Dragon Flank. So really, what... <coughs> what uh, TNT could have only done was the Altaria Fly Z-move. But that wouldn't have done anything because I am still rocking the Poi Pol, who, or which, I am still rocking the Air Balloon. So even if TNT does um, Z-move with the Flying type, I'm able to Air Balloon the following turn. So he realizes this is the best play, actually, and he's going to Z-move here. Because if he Z-moves here, he can move three steps away and land on the goal. But fortunately for me, I hit the Toxic, and that is GG Boys. See if he wasn't status, the prior turn he could have just rewound. He could have went back in time. So I thought I was like, yeah, dude, I got this. Celebi's not a problem. Well, we learned today it's a problem. Actually, Rob, I wanted to talk to you, bro. Um, if you're watching, you know what? I'll probably just chat to you on Discord. But if you are watching this before I get to you, the World Cup, bro. I think there needs to be some sort of bans because of what you just saw. Like that is that's, that's broken. All right, let's jump into the last match. All right, guys, I promised you I would show you match with Kartana because I thought Kartana was good and guess who else thought Kartana was good? Deite. So I am going up against Deite and Deite, ooh, why does this Favorian look kind of weird? I don't know why it looks kind of weird. But Deite is going to bring uh, a ground deck and the Vaporeon, I'm not sure why the Vaporeon, maybe because of the water slide? This battle opponent is knocked back one step and gains weight. I'm not sure why the Vaporeon in this deck. But he's going to try and show off the, the Garchomp, and these figures can poison. And Garchomp's double flight attack, this Pokemon jumps over the battle opponent, moving to a spot adjacent to it. If the opposing Pokemon is affected by a special condition, it is knocked out. After moving, this Pokemon may attack an opposing Pokemon again. We had a video on Garchomp like a while ago where he got like a triple kill. It's pretty cool. Um, so what we learned in my deck, why I thought Kartana was good. We can crack things. The the fighting figures give them a cracked marker. We have the Scizor. If you attack is above 130, it gives them the cracked marker. So I was like, okay. And then Kartana's ability, if this, if it knocks out a Pokemon with a cracked marker on it, that Pokemon, Excluding Fire type Pokemon, moves to the Ultra Space outside of the field. Like, okay, let's crack everything, and then let's uh, KO with Kartana. Kartana is good is because that first initial, the paper sword, or like basically the, the whatever is it, the spoon one for um, Alakazam, but it just gives me range. So what we thought was, we can just use the Rocky Helmet. That's not how the Rocky Helmet reads. 
Choose one of your Pokemon on the field or bench. If that Pokemon is knocked out by attack damage on this turn, its battle opponent is also knocked out. But if you pay attention, if you read Kartana's ability specifically, if it knocks out a Pokemon, so it's saying if you knock out, if Kartana knocks out a Pokemon, well, the Rocky Helmet, the plate knocks out the opponent, not Kartana. We tested it, and Kartana did not move them to the Ultra Space, so it was kind of upsetting. So we had to switch the deck because we initially we had two Scissors. Now we had to bring on the Celestelia because it buffs Kartana's, what is the attack? The Ultra Blade. If there are any Pokemon in the Ultra Space, this damage is multiplied by the number of those Pokemon. So, that would at least hit for 120, right? I believe. Or is it 180? Because there's two. No. Yeah, it'd be 120. Um, so, that's why we brought in the, the Selly. So, let's see how this match unfolds. They're going to open up with the Vaporeon. We are going to... Bring on Marshadow. So, they're going to air balloon here. Remember, I can't attack into this thing freely because of its ability. It can go underneath me. So basically, the premise of Deite's deck, Deite is going to try to poison things and then attack with the Garchomp. So he sees me coming up with the Celly. I'm going to air balloon with my Celly. He sees me coming up, and the plan here is to try and bring something into the Ultra Space. What happens here? Dragon Sphere. Dragon Sphere so we can bring on the... Uh, the Zygarde, but I'm going to go two steps away. We're going to try and get rid of this Poipole. Or not Poipole, but the um, Nag Naganadol. And we're just going to keep attacking until we get it. And we do, but we don't have damage it. <laughs> it's going to attack my poor little Poipole. I do get the blue, which I thought was a debatable attack for... Oh, look, he's doing that. Uh, For... Dayte because of that, because it allows me to do that. But he's going to attack my Kartana again. Probably going to lose my Kartana. We do lose Kartana. Now what we're going to do is we are going to Z-move here. We're going to use the Bug Z-move, actually, because it does bring a negative, I believe, a one marker to the opponent that's adjacent. See, as you, oh, no, it's two. It's negative two. As you can see, the Naganadol is only one MP. So they're going to Mega here, or not Mega, but they're going to Z-move here. And I was like, okay, this is actually good because it's going to put a cracked marker on you. Dude, Vaporeon's tripping out. It's tripping out hard. Uh, and now that it is cracked, what we're going to do is we're going to Max Revive our Kartana. And we're going to go straight after this um, Vaporeon. And we get a very fortunate roll. Poor Vaporeon does hit the quick attack. But now Vaporeon is in the Ultra Space. Let's go. Did I attack or did he attack? We get the toxic. We're both toxic. Okay, so what I was actually doing here, uh, we're going to stop and talk about this. We get the ultra portation again. We're going to move away, and then we're going to come back. So I'm basically setting up a surround here, but I know I can attack into this. I could, but it's not going to be a good opportunity. But what I wanted to do, I saw Ultra Beast users do this all the time. They play the Mighty Sphere, they surround their own goal, and then they throw something on there with the Rocket Ride. And when we do this, it's going to put two Mons in the um, Ultra Space. Well, yeah, two Mons in the Ultra Space. So this will be hitting for more. We're going to try and crack some more. We do have... We will be getting the plus damage. So... Uh, Deite does not see that. He's going to attack my Marshadow. I think he sees the surround that I'm trying to set up. But we do get a neutral turn here. And now we're going to play the Rocket Ride. And we're going to get rid of this Naganado. And he's going to be in my PC. So now we're going to move Lucara because I am going to Mega. I'm going to threaten to Mega here. And he's going to Max Revive. So now I'm going to Mega. And then we're going to attack into the uh, da, 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 Seismitoad. Even though I know I would be poisoned. It would be scary if the Garchomp was right here. Because then he can go over me. And Lana, he could have gone over me and cheesed me. If that was the uh, the Garchomp. But then again, Garchomp only has one purple. Uh, we're going to Z-move here. We're going to... We're just going to Z-move and get rid of this. It doesn't matter. Actually, we're going to do the fighting one. That does, I think it does that. It does leave a cracked marker, but we move two steps away, so we're gonna move back, of course, to the um, 
Seismitoad. I don't even know why I can't think of Seismitoad right now. So they're going to hit me with a Tectonic Rage, which is a guarantee. It's a KO, right? It's a ground it's a ground KO. He's actually going to be able to evolve into his Garchomp. So we have an evolved Garchomp here. We have two Garchomps here. The three-star double fight. But we're going to rush forward. We do lose the uh, the poison. Now he's going to attack into me. And he does get the double fight. So he's going to be able to hop over me and attack me again. Only problem is Lucario out here hitting the dodge. Get out of here, Garchomp. And we're going to be able to surround you. <coughs> Take you back to my PC. And at that point, it is, my friends, basically... GG boys, none of us have a Z gauge up, so I'm just gonna Rocky Helmet just in case. And we get the Fortunate Aura Sphere, and that is good games to Dayte. <laughs> He's actually going for the uh, the Earthquake here, but the problem is my Marshadow does not have a miss, so even if he did hit the Earthquake, it wouldn't have mattered. As he does hit the Earthquake. Everything spins, everything days. So I got a lot of work to do, guys. We have a lot of work to figure out these new figures. Um, I want to touch on this real quick before I let you guys go. Anthony, like last night's video, we did create a, quite a discussion. We had like over 75 comments like by this morning when I looked at it. It was a good, healthy debate. And I kind of just want to reiterate what Anthony was saying. This update's been out for a few days. Yes, there's kind of, there's a, yes, there's definitely an uproar, but let's just give it a month. Let's see what happens. See if we get more events. See if there's more ways to obtain figures. And then after a month, we as a community, we can we as a community can go to the devs. We've done it before. We can do it again. And they listen. All right. So let's not freak out just quite yet. Let's just tough it out for about a month, and then we'll go from there. So until then, ladies and gentlemen, as always, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.